This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website or domain, check out squarespace.com. Hey everybody and welcome to a new video. Do you aspire to be a professional photographer or do photography at a very high level, enough to commercialize, but are just starting out? In this video, looking back and using what I know today, I'm going to tell you what I would do if I wanted to embark on the journey to be a professional photographer starting right now. Don't forget to stay for my bonus tip, which has allowed me to sell out my 2024 Botswana workshops in no time and even have a waiting list. My name is Simon Dantremont and I'm a professional nature and wildlife photographer based in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. Now I'm blessed, truly blessed to be able to do what I love for a living and have the flexibility to do it how I want to. The reason I know I'm blessed and so fortunate is that I get messages all the time from people saying that what I do is what they dream of doing for a living. So I'm going to share my experience and tips on what steps I would take if I were starting from zero today. My first piece of advice is to focus on fewer niches and get really good at those rather than trying to be good at everything. The reason is that most commercial work you will pick up will be because of your expertise at one thing rather than your versatility. Versatility isn't the most important trait in commercial work. Handy, but not critical. Here's an example, you're a great automotive photographer. A local dealership wants photos of their new models that just came in. What's the likelihood that they're going to say, we'll hire you if you can shoot headshots of the sales team at the same time? 99% of the time, you'll get work photographing cars because you're good at that. No one in the auto business cares what else you can do. The other reason to have one or two niches where you excel rather than five or six areas where you're decent is that getting work comes from standing out in the crowd. And it's easier to build a reputation that stands out if you put your effort into one or two areas where you're amazing rather than spreading it out in five or six areas where you're just good. Now let's talk getting equipment. I would actually buy used to get more for your money. When you buy new, you pay a new premium as it were. Now there are benefits like warranty to new gear, so don't buy more than you can afford to fix if it breaks down. And what would I do with any savings? I'd buy an okay camera and I'd buy one or two great lenses. What do I mean by that? I mean I'd buy a semi-professional camera body for the price of a new entry-level camera and I'd buy one or two at the most really, really good lenses. This is because for professional photographers, lenses are more critical than camera bodies in 90% of the situations. The look they give their photos come from the lenses they choose, not the camera body. If I was a wildlife photographer, I'd get a killer long lens, like maybe a good 500 or 400 millimeter prime, and pair it with an okay camera with a decent frame rate and more megapixels. If I was a portrait photographer, a fast wide angle lens like a 24 to 70 f2.8, even an older one, or maybe an older fast 50 or 85 millimeter, and pair it with a used full frame camera from three or four years ago. Now, if your genre needs more equipment like lights, stands, and flashes, these are excellent examples where no one will ever know that it was used gear in the final photos. Buying used is fine there, even recommended. So when it comes to gear, don't buy too much stuff. Get a mid-level used but high quality kit with fewer items of decent quality rather than a ton of stuff but cheap. Align these fewer items to the smaller niche that we discussed in tip number one. Another good reason to niche down. It will make the kit required smaller too, concentrating your investment into fewer key areas. There's just no doubt having a dedicated place to show off your photography that exudes a feeling of professionalism to your body of work is critical. That's where a website comes in and a great time to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. As many social media platforms move more and more into video as a trend rather than photography, I think having a website is more important than ever. We need a place where we can showcase our photography work above and beyond social media platforms, increasingly favoring video content over your photos. Social media is great for getting known, but less great at showing how much work went into your photo by displaying a small thumbnail of your photo. 
I built my own website using Squarespace and it was a breeze. They have lots of templates for you to choose from and even templates designed for certain genres like photography. If you want to get even more creative, you can go outside the templates and design your own pages from scratch with tools for adding text and video clips, photos, and links to other websites. Not only is this a great way to display your work, you can monetize it with your own online store, or you can even offer people a free download for signing up for your email list, like I do. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Simon to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. My next step is to get at least a decent level of proficiency in editing and processing photos. Now this may be disheartening to some who say, I don't want to process photos and just want to take great pics. The issue at play though is not that the photos need to be processed to look good, it's about differentiation and style. As part of developing your craft, standing out in a crowded marketplace involves having photos that look unique and show off something that others can't provide. While this can be done in camera and you don't need to be great at photo processing, the ability to process your photos to a look or style gives you way more options to stand out. There's only so many ways to take a photo of an engagement ring on someone's finger or of a lion in Kenya, but there's an infinite number of ways to process that photo to give a special look, your look, or your style. I often get comments on my photos, I knew it was your photo before I saw your name. That's partly how I take the photo, but partly how I edit and compose the photo to my aesthetic. This now becomes my brand and my style. You don't even need to become an expert at processing, just proficient enough to impart your artistic vision to your photos so you can stand out in the crowd. The next trick is to get good. Now this will seem a bit obvious to some, but I've heard from many people saying that they don't own a camera and would like to be a professional photographer. Now I do admire their determination and there's nothing wrong with setting lofty goals for yourself, but this is putting the cart before the horse, so to speak. Part of being a professional at anything will usually involve doing it at a very high level of quality and proficiency. Now, not all people who have these high levels of proficiency will do it professionally. There are amateurs who do photography at the highest levels, but being a professional or high performing amateur means doing it and doing it well. And the only way to get there is to practice, make mistakes, fall down and get up again and do it over. So if you want to attract other people's attention and earn their business, you need proficiency at a high level. You need to get good at it. Keep working on your craft and don't expect to go pro on day one. Shoot, shoot, and then shoot some more. Learn, grow, develop, and mature your craft, develop a style, and expect that business will start slowly and slowly rise with your reputation, your proficiency, and your business acumen. There's just no way around it. People will only hire you if you show up on their radar. To do that, you need to get known and you need exposure. Now this can be a tricky part of the business for some because we're not all extroverts, social butterflies that love meeting people and interacting with them. Some people are introverts and things like social media are tough for them. I have a whole video on growing your business without social media, which you can see here, but make sure you come back. Even if I have a video on getting known without social media, it would be foolish to not mention that it is a powerful tool in getting exposure and getting known. It has few geographic borders and tons of reach. Heck, I got recognized in Kenya by more than a dozen people on my recent trip and heard my name being mentioned at a table behind me at a restaurant in the Masai Mara. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, they can all work, and you may want to put your effort into all of them, but understand that which one you want to focus on the most depends on your target market. Under 25 market, TikTok. 20 to 40 year olds, Instagram. 50 plus, Facebook. Media, they're on Twitter. Pick your focus areas with intention. Start by getting known where you live. Getting known in your local market will get you exposure leading to other things. I've been lucky to be on TV on the top three networks in my province and in all the major newspapers. They're actually looking for content. So they reached out to me and said, can we do a feature on you and what you do? Remember, it helps getting known locally before you take on the world. For a company looking to hire or partner with a photographer, the ones with strong social media presence will be top of mind, more readily recommended or discussed by word of mouth. 
My first gig shooting wildlife footage for a nature documentary came from the spouse of a filmmaker who followed me on Facebook. For companies looking to grow their business, promotion via well-known photographers using social media is now one of the primary ways they advertise, and we'll discuss later how that can be one of your income sources. So get yourself known. Ramp up your social media presence by posting good photos regularly and engaging with your audience. Do your local networking by maybe speaking at local photo clubs. Make connections with people in the sector you want to work in and find collaborations with better known photographers where you can both learn and get exposure. Clients are increasingly looking for video content to accompany photos. If you're not shooting video, you're most likely only serving part of your client's needs. Tourism agencies are looking for drone footage flying over their favorite attractions. People want video footage of their weddings along with photos, and companies are looking for video footage for social media purposes. You can also use video in many forms to promote your own business, as many social media platforms are favoring video content. You don't need to be an expert videographer for many of these, but you should be able to answer yes when asked, do you shoot video too? Many DSLRs and mirrorless cameras made in the last five years do great video. Put it to good use. The next issue is to realize that most professional photographers will get income from a portfolio of sources and most will start small and scale up over time. As such, I would put out of mind that your photography career will consist of one thing and one income source that will go from nothing to full-time overnight. Becoming a professional is more likely a process than an event. For most professional photographers, turning a photography passion into a living comes from starting with a modest income, producing a few pieces of work, and eventually growing that over time on the side at which point, if you're lucky, it becomes enough to make a leap of faith and do it full time. One job here leads to a couple more jobs, leads to more connections, a referral or two, and next thing you know, you have a business. The best thing about the portfolio approach is that you can scale up the ones where the revenue per amount of work is best for you. So expect to have multiple sources of income depending on your genre. Maybe 40% of your work will come from contract or project work, another 25% from products you sell, like prints or calendars. Maybe you'll do educational workshops for 20%, then social media revenue for 10%, and speaking engagements at clubs for 5%. And now for my bonus tip. Be someone that people enjoy dealing with. Photography is like any business where people first do business with you for your reputation and your value proposition, but they stay with you or come back for more because of what you're like to deal with as a person. Be someone that people want to spend time with. Are you the type of person that people want to align themselves with? Someone recently posted on one of my social media posts something along the lines of, I don't know why this guy is so popular. He's like the 7,000th best photographer here. My answer was, maybe it's because I'm not worried about anyone being better than me, and if I can help someone make better photos than me, then that's a win in my book. If this person is a decent photographer who hasn't had commercial success, maybe they should read their own comments to figure out why. If you were a business looking for a photographer to partner with, who would you do business with? Be a business partner that people enjoy dealing with and it will pay dividends over time in referrals, repeat business, and commercial partnerships. If you think your photos aren't standing out from the crowd or you think your photos are boring, I have a whole video on taking more innovative pics that stand out which you can see right here. If you thought this video deserving, give it a like and YouTube will share it with other photographers looking to further grow their passion. And I hope that you can use these tips to start your own journey into being the best photographer you can, whatever level you aspire to be. I know you can do it.